Hello out there. To all the MSJ community, uh, this is season two, episode three of Talent Talks. I'm Victor Ortiz Jr., your host today. And today I will be discussing alongside a few others, um, Dr. Michelle Weber and Nick Pettis, um, regarding Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, which spans from September 15th to October 15th. Now, some of you might be wondering why we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month in between the middle of two separate months. It's kind of weird, right? The answer is really simple. Most Latino American countries, with the exception of Puerto Rico, which I would consider a modern day colony owned by the United States, um, won independence on or around September 15th. So most Latin American um, countries um, had, uh, to clarify, had um, uh, won their independence on or around September 15th. Um, just a random fact, uh, there are 61 modern day colonies in the world, so I don't want to make it seem like Puerto Rico is the other, the only modern day um, colony. Um, it's also the oldest um, colony, uh, just random fact again. So Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, let's think about what does it mean to you? Does it have an effect on you? Does it cause you to think certain things or cause you to think a certain way? Or maybe do you understand how it influences, or maybe do you understand how it influences you? Um, let's face it, labels are complicated and have a complicated history. So what does being Hispanic or Latine, Latinex, Latino, which I didn't even, like the whole Latina thing, I didn't even know existed until I was researching for this. <laughs> I mean, what does all that actually mean? You know, the Latino community is not monolith and it's, and it is inclusive of many people and places, um, but are, they're also inclusive of many customs and cultures. You know, oftentimes we think we might feel like Hispanic falls short to describe us um, that identify with the culture. Um, you know, we all come from Spaniard influence, but we are different based on on what culture or ancestry we do come from. So for example, I am Puerto Rican or Boricua. And that means that I am three groups lumped into one. <laughs> so <laughs> that means I'm Taino indigenous. I am part of African tribes, which by the way, were groups that were enslaved by my other identity, the Spaniards. So <laughs> the Tainos are the original indigenous people of Puerto Rico and named the island Borincan. So Africa, when Africans were brought into the island as slaves, when the Spaniards colonized the territory. So what I am getting at here is that one individual can encompass a multitude of races and ethnicities. So to be lumped them to one, to me and to many is to diminish one, personal, one person's identity and perhaps achievements and even the legacies that our ancestors may have left uh, or have left for us. So that kind of leads me to, you know, to my to uh, uh, interaction and questions. Um, so, what is part of your culture? What is part of your culture, and how does it influence you? So, so, for example, like Latin cultures often influence others who aren't necessarily from a Latin-based background. So, with that in mind, what pieces of the Latin culture influence you? Are there any crossover music artists or even actors that influence you? Is there architecture? There's a lot of architecture here in Southern California that were influenced by, by Spanish, by the Spanish. There's food, um, <laughs> tacos um, there, you know, or even like a second language that you have focused on maybe learning or um, picked up a little bit on, you know, like for example, like me, my culture, for me, my culture's music draws from three different identities. Like I said, um, you know, there's merengue, salsa, there's bachata, and music artists like Tito Puente, Celia Cruz, Eddie Santiago, who was an earlier Spanish um, or salsa singer, um, even Mark Anthony. Everybody knows Mark Anthony. Um, you know, these are all inspired from our indigenous and Spanish heritage. Um, you know, to me, this was passed down to me from my parents and are therefore part of my culture and even identity. So whenever I hear any of these artists, it 
causes me to feel proud of where I came from and how some of it inspires uh, other people to create new art and even sounds. So um, with that said again, well, I guess what, what pieces of the Latin, of the Latin culture influence you just to kind of round it back? I, I, there was a lot that I said in between the, the, the questions. So um, I guess which um, Dr. Weber or Nick, whichever would like to go first, you know, what pieces of the Latin culture influence you? Um, well, I grew up in New Mexico, Nuevo Mexico, um, and a lot of people assume that the culture there is of Mexican descent, and it's just not. Um, it's very Spanish influenced, like Spanish Spain, Spaniards, like you mentioned, are some of your ancestors, Victor. Um, it was colonized by Oñate and some of those uh, Spanish colonists who co-mingled with the indigenous culture there and created something that was slightly different. Um, and so a lot of my favorite things, people say, oh, new Mexican foods, Mexican food, and it's, it's not. <laughs> um, they have something called the sopa pia, which is my absolute favorite dessert. Um, it's basically fried dough. Uh, and you put honey or cinnamon sugar on it. Um, they also have the, the tradition of the luminarias during Christmas time, which is the the paper bags with sand and candles to light the pathway for the Christ child. Um, and that's sort of stuck there and you can see it all over the neighborhoods. Everyone still does it there, whether you're of Spanish heritage or not. Um, um, so those were integrated into my childhood and I still go back there from time to time. Um, when I came to Southern California, it was definitely more um, South American and Mexican culture that is around around me and I live in Paris currently which is a very uh Hispanic culture all of my neighbors are um and so I enjoy that especially the ones that have parties with their street tacos and <laughs> and all their good stuff so yeah all of those things are sort of what I think of um I'm just wondering what's the right term do you have any idea is it Latinx or is it Hispanic or is there a difference between the if terms? If I can jump in. Sure. So I actually researched this and there is a difference between it. Enlighten so, us, Nick. So Hispanic are the original Spaniards that came to their colonies, essentially. And then Latinx, which is the broad term for everyone, not just Latinos, the Latin American men, and Latinas, who are the Latin women. Latinx is the Latin Americas. So that's actually something hmm. interesting that I had not known before then. I thought it was all one big group of everybody, mm -mm. but it's divided into yeah. its right categories or I'm groups. looking at the internet the internet says Hispanic means you speak Spanish so if you happen to be from South America and you speak Portuguese then you're not Hispanic you're Latinx so Brazilians or folks from Portugal who might still be within that culture are not considered Hispanic it's super confusing because it, I mean, you, it's like you said, it's not monolithic. It's, it covers a wide range of peoples all over different parts of the world. So, so yes. <laughs> I can also say that it's um, very confusing, even to, I guess, even to, to, to me, because sometimes when people say, okay, you're Hispanic, well, I prefer to be, uh, uh, I guess, labeled, <laughs> mm -hmm, right. referred to as uh, Latino or even Puerto Rican, or even right. one of the conversations that I've had recently with family is, what do I mark off on government forms? Like, do we, we are, we're grouped into this, you know, each Hispanic 
or Latin or whichever one you want to you want to be placed into, we're all lumped into this one category. And some people are just like, no, that's not me. Like, <laughs> let me just check off other. I'm like, is there a box for other to be able to put like, you know, what you identify as? Is that even an option? Or is, is it okay to do that? And it's just, it, it can be a little confusing. And then with everyone just kind of adding more and more and more, as I said earlier, I didn't even know that Latina was a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's just, it's just interesting how, how um, weird we are trying, attempting to define things and trying to understand them. But the more we try to define and understand, the more, the more uh, confusing it can become. Yeah, I mean, you see that they try to put voting blocks into one group and it's like, okay, now you've got Latino voters. It's like, what does that even mean? Because <laughs> it's, it's such a big, uh, yeah. And so that's sort of the problem I think with, with labels as well as that. How do you put a label on something that's that diverse in and of itself you know what I mean yeah um so to throw that question back to you Victor what are some of your things that you identify with and traditions that you enjoy well like right now the holidays are coming up um uh I myself can't wait to eat some pasteles for you know those Puerto Ricans out there or even individual other individuals that um that know what that is. Um, that's just our version of, I guess the best way that I can uh, describe that is um, it's very similar to uh, tamales. Um, whereas we use, like with pasteles, we use plantains and uh, we put meat inside the, uh, the, the plantain and then we wrap it up in uh, wax paper and then we just, we boil it until it's cooked. Um, There's also coquito, uh, which is our version of um, eggnog. Um, It could be alcoholic or non-alcoholic, whichever way you want, you prefer to drink. I prefer (laughs) non-alcoholic. It's largely due to the fact that I don't like rum. Um, So um, coquito has rum in it. Uh, So those are just some of the, from at least from, um, my part of the culture that I enjoy. Um, there's also parrandas uh, for um, Puerto Ricans. Um, those are, that's our version of Christmas caroling. Of course, some people might not so much enjoy that form of Christmas caroling. The only reason for that is because parrandas, um, we basically have all sorts of instruments like a band and we will start knocking on your door starting at like 12 midnight, all the way up until five o'clock in the morning. So we can either, (laughs) if you're not on the island, then some people don't understand. So they hear all this ruckus going on at like two o'clock in the morning and we get the cops called on us. So uh, that's that's one of the, like, really enjoy, I don't enjoy so much the, um, the, um, the caroling in that in that sense where we get the cop we can get the cops call on us but it's just really fun to be able to it's very family oriented and we're just up literally all night making noise and celebrating the season so um that's just what just to answer your question that's what i you know those are some of the traditions that i that i that i enjoy Awesome. Thanks for sharing. I think yeah. that it's really interesting to hear about the plantain uh, based food that you're talking about that are like tamales, but, but you don't use the, the cornmeal or, or what goes into well, it. Yeah, we don't tamales. use cornmeal um, or the, um, I think it's uh, the, um, I guess the Mexicans use um, mm-hmm. the, uh, the um the i guess the not just the cornmeal but they wrap it up in the corn stock thing yeah (laughs) (laughs) i don't know what it's called but yes yeah but either way and you know like i enjoy both it's just the 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 closest similarity that i can make to it um but yeah cool Uh, i guess with that said i i guess our um what i guess is there any part of 
um, how do you feel about being more inclusive of other cultures within, within your family or even friends? Um, because we live in such a community that's, I guess, inclusive of it, of, of I guess, Latino culture. Um, how do you feel about, you know, being more inclusive of that, of that, and even explaining where some of that comes from? Because I just kind of feel like, you know, individuals in society, or even us, like even so in Southern California, uh, we we celebrate uh, some of these things, but we don't necessarily, and we enjoy them, but we don't necessarily know exactly where it comes from. Um, we don't, I don't know that we all the time um, take out the time to to express, hey, this is where this comes from. Kind of like what you mentioned earlier, Dr. Dr. Weber, where, you know, we, you grew up and when you were growing up, they were just like, oh, okay, well, this is what happens where, you know, you know where, where, um, where I grew up, but they don't necessarily associate it or tie it to, it, I guess, an even bigger um, meaning or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess, you know, again, I guess how do, how, I guess maybe I should restate it a different way. How do we feel we should, we should explain it to people so that people can better understand? That uh, is a really good question. I think, as you mentioned in Southern California, we sort of take it for granted. Like it's just all around us. It's, it's in everything. Um, we go down the street to Cardenas and get a really delicious burrito and you don't even, you know, you don't think about it. You go in there, they're playing the music and they have all of the Mexican food and it's just, it's no big deal, you know, but I guarantee if you went somewhere where that was less prevalent, it would be more unusual to them, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I, I get the feeling that unless the culture is all around you or you're exposed to it, you have a tendency to stereotype and um, maybe not see things as they are. So my suggestion to people is immersion, like go chat with folks like you, Victor, about what your background is and what your traditions are. And it's funny because like last year, Seydel, um, she's from Cuba, so she did a little piece on her Cuban heritage, and then Cindy, both of them identify as Hispanic. She's from Guatemala, which isn't anywhere near really Cuba, <laughs> and so completely different, but yet a common language, but still very different uh, backgrounds and traditions and like you said Puerto, Puerto Rico being slightly different from all of those um, so I, I think it's important I guess with the Hispanic Heritage Month to not lump everyone into the same sort of pot you know and assume that everyone because they speak Spanish is from Mexico <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean yeah, I mean, I think that kind of branches off to something that you said, you know, um, just to kind of branch off and off of that is, um, you know, you what you had mentioned earlier is just going out and just speaking to people and trying to learn because one of the things that I think is a little, unfortunately, prevalent in even like just everyone in general, you take a look at somebody and you automatically assume they're this or that. Mm -hmm. you know, like mentioned, you know, Puerto Ricans, we are Africa, we are, you know, we come from Africa, Africa, we mm -hmm. come from um, the Taino indigenous people, mm -hmm. uh, we come from Spaniard. So that means mm -hmm. that we literally can have anywhere between a Spaniard that, you know, has, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, mm -hmm. um, white, uh, we can have somebody who's th more Taino, who's, you know, brown skinned like me, or um, someone who is, who appears to be black, or just someone mm -hmm. just from Africa, you know, from African descent, you know, we can have a mixture of all three of those, mm -hmm. but kind of branch off even further into that, that is actually present in a lot of different mm -hmm. countries and cultures. So it's important for us to really try to dive in and try to understand and try to, you know, have those conversations with people rather than, you know, placing labels and assuming, um, one of the things as well that I kind of think about too is, you know, my, my sister, she's married and she's interracially married. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I hear her and my brother-in-law discussing is, well, what would our children be? be? Mm -hmm. You know, like, 
what about the last name? Like my sister has a Spanish last name. My brother-in-law has uh, an Irish last name, but no one's going to know that that's an Irish last name. They're just going to associate it with whatever they're going to associate it with. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. Just really important to kind of, you know, educate and to try to explain, you know, it's just, you know, we live in such, in a society that's so, I want to say, I, I, you know, not to be mean or anything, but we just, we just like to assume a lot. And if we would just take out the time to really think and listen as to why we have certain things and try to better understand them, even me with Hispanic Heritage Month, um, with doing a little bit of research, I've learned a little bit more because I can't say that I even I myself really celebrated it. I was like, okay, well, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, but it's really important to try to, to educate the community and help them better understand so that there isn't so much division I, yes. I, I, um, in understanding and, and, and maybe minimize some of those fears that are out there. Um, and it, again, it just, it doesn't just it extend with the Hispanic, you know, Hispanic Heritage Month. It's literally everything. So that's kind of, a, you know, that's kind of my, you know, summary and assessment of that. You know, I, you know, I think that it's evident that Latinos in general are inspired by their, own, by their own culture and, um, also overall cultures of the Latin community as we mm-hmm. hear, you know, um, Nick, what do you think? Yeah, definitely off of what Dr. Weber said, I am one who was immersed in all cultures because I went to public schools in Temecula and Marietta and I just talked to people and found out who they are and what their story is. And I just, I, I don't know the right word for this, but I'm amazed by how far the people I've met have come from far distances across the world, basically, to be here and live their best life. Yeah, and it's definitely, I mean, I think that's exactly what it's all about. You know, we, we are America and we are all part of different, we branch off of different different uh, places and, you know, distant places that we're from. And that's what makes us American. Um, and just to better understand one another is just, it, you know, it's important. You know, again, it's important to have these conversation and conversations and highlight uh, these differences that make us all unique. Um, you know, in the world of American culture, what makes us individually or culturally special can sometimes get lost. And that's something that we should work really hard at trying not for that not to happen. So, yeah. Exactly. And unless you are Native American yourself, you are not from here. You have to come here. <laughs> That's, that's definitely so true about it yeah america is the melting pot where we can learn about all different cultures not just american culture hispanic latinx culture we can learn about any and that's what i love about our country yeah very true very true well, so is there anything else that you'd like that may I may not have meant or we may not have um, I guess covered here that we would like to maybe mention to our um, our, our uh, MSJC community and even communities that yeah. extend outside of that? I just think it's a, a great time to reflect um, uh, if you are Hispanic or Latinx on the other parts of your culture that maybe you don't know about by reading. Um, books by Hispanic authors that you may be wouldn't otherwise read um, if you're like me. Um, and, you know, during these history months, it's a great time to sort of de- deep, do a deep dive. Like you said, Nick, you looked up <laughs> the different names and what they mean. And Victor, you said you did some research. And I think that this is the time to do that. And there's all of these Black History Month, and there's Women's History Month, and there's Hispanic Heritage Month, and there's um, LGBTQ Week, um, and it just sort of helps us focus on 
these beautiful differences that make up sort of the fabric of who we are. Um, and I, th I think the, the am amount of division that is happening right now, um, we need to focus on the beauty of the differences and how interesting that makes us um, and also how connected it makes us too. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. Yeah, no, I, um, it's definitely important right now. Um, I, I, I would agree with that statement. Um, you know, I, a lot of us, again, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we like to assume, um, and even a lot of, there's a lot of opinion out there. And it's really easy for me to say, well, go out there and educate yourself. But even coming from um, underprivileged communities, it sometimes people don't necessarily understand or, 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 or hear that. Uh -huh. um, and it's really easy for even somebody who didn't grow up in that kind of world to be able to say, okay, well then just pick up a book and read. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes for some people, you know, we all come, you know, uh, as Nick said earlier, this is the melting pot. You know, we come from different places and it's just really important for us to, you know, literally sit down and like, take a look at even yourself at what you're mm -hmm. thinking and what you're doing so that we can better understand. So that again, we can minimize those divisions. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you everyone. Thank you, Dr. Weber. And thank you, Nick, for being a part of this uh, com great conversation regarding uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. And hope to, um, hope to uh, see you at the next episode. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.